I said at the beginning, I don't know if there's anybody else here who has ever been asked, what have you done for 90 years to keep you happy? So I'm very happy to be able to share some of the ideas with you today. I was born and raised in Wisconsin a long time ago, in fact, 90 years ago. And I was educated in Wisconsin, came to California, and have been in California ever for the last, uh, well, up to this time. But I'm very interested in what this topic is about. I've never ever thought about being 90 years old and what it means. And I think each and every one of us should think about that once in a while. What really makes you happy? And happiness is the key to becoming an older and a wiser individual. And I think one of the first things that's ever happened to me when I was very young, very less a long time ago, I was with my mother as she came to tell me, she said, you know, Jerry, your grandfather has just passed away. And he said he was 60 years old and he had a wonderful life. And look at all the things he did to have a happy life. And I said, mother, what did he do besides depart take care of the department store in a little town in Wisconsin with a thousand people? And she said, you know what I think about it, Jerry? I don't know if he ever did anything that really made him happy but to work. And I thought right then, that's not the way I'm going to live. Boy, I'm going to do all I can to make a difference. And so I came to California when I was about 21 years old and decided to pursue my education. And I went on to the University of Southern California, which by the way has the largest number of foreign students of any university in the world. And I had an opportunity right then to begin to think about what do I want to get out of life. And the most important thing I thought at first was to make a difference in somebody's life. What a challenge that is for every one of us. And that's the challenge that I thought could make me the happiest. And so I set out to set up some goals. And I remember setting up goals. Uh, some, some you're going to reach and some you won't, and you're going to learn from the experience. So I kind of checked that off. And then I thought about a challenge. Let's be challenged in life. Every one of us should be challenged to become a better person. And with that comes the association, in particular with friends. I've learned in these 90 years that the most important thing in this world is to have some good friends, friends who you can depend on, friends who will encourage you and play the ball game with you, whether you win or whether you lose. And so this is kind of a positive attitude. And I was thinking about challenges. I've had some real challenges. And you know, when I think about it, they're, they're very different. One of the challenges, I've had some serious health problems. I've been, I have had two heart attacks, two bypass surgeries, I've had prostate cancer, and with radiation, I've had a gallbladder operation. But all these things challenged me, and I said, I'll be damned, I'm going to lick these things. But I think then I started laughing about the challenges that I had. I spent some time in Nigeria, and one of the, uh, uh, the ambassador there, I was working on a Ford project to do some revamping of the educational system, and Mrs. Incivero, who was the mayor of Port Harcourt, kept asking me to have, uh, come and have curry chicken with her sometimes. She wanted to make it specially the way she makes it. And so the ambassador said, now, Jerry, this is a challenge because we know that it's very highly seasoned. You've seen the chickens running around here. You know what these chickens are going to be all about. So I said, I don't know if I can handle this. And he said, this is a challenge. So I went to Mrs. Encero's, and she was a, a lovely, beautiful woman. And I thought there were going to be other people there, but she <laughs> kept me being the only one. So I got in there, and here came this beautiful display of food. And I had been told that it is really very highly seasoned, so be a little careful, Jerry, when you're eating it. So I started eating it, and I thought, this is going to be a challenge if I'm going to get through with this. And so all of a sudden, my nose started to run because of the spicy uh, food, the curry that was in there. And I thought, oh, gosh, can I get through this whole thing without embarrassing Mrs. Encivero? And she finally reached over, and she said, your nose is running, isn't it? And I thought, yes. 
And I thought, she said, good, good, good. I've seasoned the chicken the way it's supposed to be seasoned. So I met that challenge and, and, and went on my way. But the other thing that I'm very concerned about is change is inevitable. And that's so hard for us to accept, but it's true. Change is inevitable. And as you're building your life and live your life, you have to remember that change is inevitable and things will never stay the same. So one of the things that I found has made me the happiest in my life is to volunteer. And I think every single one of us should be challenged to volunteer in some sort of way. I become deeply involved in the arts. I volunteer in several different organizations. And I've met the most wonderful people who share with me the need to do something to help individuals. And one particular agency that I volunteer for is called Ability First. And it's an organization that helps uh, uh, stu uh, students who are disabled mentally as well as physically. And to see what volunteering does to help these people become better people and to make a difference. And I think one of the things that's helped me become a happy person up to 90 years is to be able to realize that I have made a difference in people's lives. And the greatest compliment each one of us can have is to have somebody come to you and say, you know, because of you, you've made a difference in my life. And this has a lot to do about being happy, to enjoy life, but keep occupied. And I think that this is one of the things that I, when it, I was reading what they said about me in here, and it said I've traveled around the world. I work for the University of Southern California that has the largest number of international students of any university in the world. So I've had a rare opportunity to meet all these different cultures. And one of the greatest things that's happened to me is to build these friendships. And one of my greatest friendships is I had a heart attack on the, in the Arabian Gulf here a few years ago uh, on a cruise ship. And had it not been for my friend, uh, His Excellency Saeed uh, al Shamsi, he came and helped me and actually really saved my life. And so I think the idea of friends, and when I, when I left uh, Abu Dhabi after having some problems in the hospital, I said, Saeed, how do I thank you for all that you've done? And he said, all I want you to remember is I always want to be your friend. And so I want to leave that with you tonight, that to build your friendships, take advantage of this, and they are the people that will make you happy. And it's interesting that uh, about 12 years ago, uh, when I was 12 years old, I went to an exhibit in, Fra in uh, Seattle, Washington. It was the World's Fair. And in that World's Fair was a pavilion built by the French government. And I went into that pavilion, and they had all these beautiful things that were on the wall and everything. But at 12 years old, I looked up and saw this sign. And it said, I shall, I shall miss most of earthly life, neither power, which is despicable, nor pleasures that are frail. Only shall I miss my fellow beads. Two things on this earth are precious. First is love, and second and far behind is intelligence. Furthermore, love and intelligence are very close who understands. Beyond this, nothing. Thank you. <laughs>